What's up, guys, and welcome to an all-new episode of the Super Friends Broadcast, brought to you today by our friends over at Loot Crate. You can save 10% off any subscription just by using our exclusive link, trylootcrate.com slash hybrid network, and once you get there, punching in the promo code BRIDGE10. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Super Friends, episode 64. I'm your host this week, Nick, and I am joined by the usual guys in CJ. What's up, guys? And DC Luke. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, it's yeah. DC uh, Luke on the DC have... podcast. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? We're having a good time right now. Yeah, Viola Davy. <laughs> we are. We're reminiscing about how many times I said that during the award show. The answer is a lot. <laughs> yeah, how? Yeah. So CJ, what are you drinking right now? Over the um, and... To get through this podcast, I am imbibing myself with a New Belgium 1554 Black Lager, because it's the only thing I have left in my house. That's cold. <laughs> it's the only thing I have that's drinkable in my house. You gotta Basically. stay warm with that lager. I, you know, it, it is actually heating me up. I was outside at work for four hours in, in freezing temperatures, and it was not fun. But I'm inside, oh, and wow. I'm toasty now. The lively conversation is keeping me warm. I'm drinking uh, Jack Daniel's Tennessee Honey with Cactus Cooler. Ooh. It's a uh, dangerous. What is a Cactus smooth... Cooler? What's that? What is What's Cactus that? Cooler? Cactus Cooler of the soda. I've never had that before in my life. I oh, really? don't. E- I did not even know that was a thing. See, it's got to yeah, be a West uh, Coast thing. Yeah, I've never heard probably, of that. Probably, uh, it's like a. Um, I'm trying to think. What is it? I think it's. I think it's called a pineapple pineapple orange soda or something like that. Huh, like that sounds delicious. Oh, okay. It's really good. Yeah, it actually, it makes the Jack so smooth. Like there's just nothing. You can't even taste it really. This is the tipsy bartender. This is bartender probably why I'm like slurring words. And <laughs> this is going to be an interesting show. But this is the tipsy bartender cast. Um, tipsy Dude, my head hurts. Money. <laughs> yeah. Well, two out of three are tipsy bartenders. One of us has to be mature and responsible and is drinking water. There you go. Luke is Aww. our designated it, podcaster. Yeah. So I'll keep y'all in line. Make Thank sure goodness. you don't run anyone over. Hopefully we don't run it we don't call Thank anyone goodness. like that Ian Jackson asshole. All that. <laughs> oh uh, what, boy. What, I mean, <laughs> slurp. There we go. That's it. Oh boy. I mean, the one thing I'll say to him, and we are going to talk about that, that's actually our first topic, uh, is kind of what we had addressed <laughs> that's a good segue. in that comic. If you want to, so we can segue right into it. We, I mean, there's there's a lot being made out of, of the fact that we didn't do a news flash about Affleck's comments on Kimmel. And the reason for that is we wanted to discuss it here, because at this point, in my opinion, there's so much to discuss. Like, we've had his comments... Well, he's made a whole slew of comments over the last few months that were like a little bit non-committal. And finally, last night on Kimmel, he comes out with a very definitive statement of "Yes, I am going to direct the movie." Uh, and it's just one of those things where it's like you know we kind of wanted to talk about the saga as a whole, like this whole like is he or is he is he not? And we've got a new report from Batman on film that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, but I mean, it just gets I don't understand like the watching to hate something mentality like that's the one thing just I want to say first it's like man it's like like why would you keep watching something you hate why would you keep watching us and listening to us and watching our videos if you hate what we have to say and you know you're probably not gonna like it I just I don't get it I I mean we have uh, a couple of people now that we've uh, you know we're a little bit bigger we have a couple of people that actually do that that don't like our stuff and continually watch. I don't know if it's like their basic faith in us that it's like they're going to turn it around this time. I know it, uh, you know, or what. But I just I can't see myself regularly doing that. Like, there's not much I, I mean, really, really hate in the world. But it's like, ugh. I guess. Well, I mean, I guess first and foremost, we do do new stuff like every day. And I that's true. If they don't, if like they don't stay with us, they could miss out on some news that comes out. But. I do agree with you because on the Super Friends thing, because Super Friends, it's always the same people, like, every week, and why? 
Like, I, like just, do I don't you, understand. Do you like, put it on and listen like, to something that you don't want to listen to? Do you put it on to like furiously lift to? Like, is that what happens? I'm giving you an out here that's like a reasonable explanation. Is that what happens? Like, do you just put it on and like <laughs> it's like God, I just want to pick things up and put them down repeatedly? It's like what yeah, is like. like what I is mean, it? we like, talk what? good about some stuff. Like, whenever we talk about the comic books, yeah, we love talking about the comics and the TV shows and stuff. It's just, if you don't want to get upset, just skip the movie stuff. I don't understand Trust me. the point of... Yeah. Nick knows these are not short podcasts. We, do, <laughs> we talk about things for a long time. He knows better than anyone. It's like, these are long... Po- like It's like subjecting yourself to... You know, at minimum, like, the five minutes of, of whatever random shit we're talking about in the beginning of each podcast, and then whatever, you know, getting through however many topics to what we're going to talk about. Luckily, we're going to make it easy for some people and talk about the controversial shit right out of the gate, but, uh, like, I don't get it. We've put timestamps in there, so maybe that maybe we're helping them out. We're fueling their hate-filled agenda. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. We're going to break the conditioning, guys. But, we're going uh... to break, con- break the conditioning. <laughs> On that on that sad note, I guess we should talk about uh, what we're actually news that came out. subtweeting about here. Uh, yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess there's like no introduction. All right, whatever. <laughs> so the, the first topic that we have is that, um, like CJ mentioned, Ben Affleck did go on Jimmy Kimmel, and Kimmel was like, "So, what's up with all these rumors? Like, are you gonna do Batman? Like, what's going on with that?" He said, "Yes, I'm directing it." Uh, just give me some time because Live By Night, he did mention, took like a year and a half to kind of get the script done, get the movie where he wanted it to be. So he's, I mean, that kind of makes me assume that he's trying to take the same amount of time with Batman. Maybe not as much, though, because he knows people want it like right now. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I could sympathize with him because making movies is a long process. Usually it's about two years or more, actually, for a movie. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, it's... uh. I don't know. I, I think it'll work yeah. out. I think the movie will get made, um, you know, soon. When is the question? <sighs> just, yeah, I don't know what's going on. But I don't know, Luke, what are your thoughts? Like, you, um, just the whole controversy and everything. I just, I don't know. I just liked that uh, Jimmy Kimmel's little thing kind of answered all the things that I thought. Because he literally, I think on Jimmy Kimmel was like, I'm working on it. Give me a fucking second or something. Like, I know yeah. they bleeped him a few times, but, uh... It just, I can see it being frustrating because, like, in almost any interview Ben Affleck's ever done, there's always a question of Batman, and I can assume so many times because this, this isn't like a just a random guy that's like just yeah we're gonna have fun or everything. He wants to make like a really good movie. Like I can tell just from what he said in interviews, it's not like Batman is just gonna be like yeah I'm doing a Batman movie. He really wants to make a good movie with Batman in it, and with people just keep asking him about it. Just I, I can assume it would get frustrating. So it's it's really refreshing, kind of you know, to have somebody say that they they want to get it right. And to me, that's kind of the endearing thing about the whole saga is that he really he said basically if it's a bad movie, it's not worth doing. And it's like, well, we won't really know until the end whether it's a bad movie or not. But you know, I agree <laughs> with him and the fact that it's like you know, I, I like that perspective, and I think that's honestly kind of like a raw kind of emotional honesty for him to even as an actor come out and say that because you don't hear actors saying that uh, ever and I mean I really appreciate that kind of candor from Affleck it's kind of what he's known for I just I th- I've always had it in the back of my mind that when he's saying something like Yo, oh maybe maybe I will direct it maybe I won't we'll see kind of like his last couple of comments seem to indicate that kind of coy nature uh, you know I've always kind of kept it in the back of my mind that maybe that was his reaction to people like freaking out and I you know maybe he just yeah, miscalculated maybe. and it made people freak out more um but you know i i don't know it like nick said movie making is a long process usually it's 2 years the kind of the 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 way studios are set up now especially the major ones movies can be cranked out in like a year and a half i think i was um for marvel can actually get it done really quick for dc movies it's usually about 16 months from the start of production to when the movie hits the, the screen and that's but that's from filming from from, uh, from filming to actually hitting theaters uh, that's not like when people start writing things in the case of Suicide Squad it was like 
okay, what's 16 months plus eight weeks? Uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was a little bit shorter. But movie making takes a long time. And I think in the process of, of making the best Batman film possible, we should give him that time. Uh, the question for me is, even though I say that, will WB give him that time? Um, or will they will or will they say, all right, look, we need you to you know step it up, or we're going to replace you? That's my fear. I don't fear Affleck. People, I think, have that I, wrong idea. I fear WB. I, I don't know if they would do that though. See, in all honesty, because I feel like I I no, I know what you're gonna. I know that it can be scary. I just feel like they they have, they have to be delicate. Sometimes. I feel. Luke, you I feel get, like you have to be de- scared. <laughs> You Shut up! Get, Shut, stop you it! You have one movie that doesn't do good, and then you have another movie that doesn't do good. You can get scared sometimes. You I get just, scared. I was, I'm just. I mean, you got this one it. guy that did really good in that one movie that I'm saying didn't do that. well. I, I, you get scared, but you know you got something to build on. But then the actor, you let him direct. He's just dragging. He's I feel just dragging his feet. I feel like you, Affleck so is a commodity <laughs> that they don't want to let go of, and I feel like. It would be in their best interest to play ball with him. That's why this no. whole spring 2018 thing, I would hope, isn't officially set in stone because I would like it if Affleck had the opportunity to work as long as he can on it without having to worry about deadlines and stuff. So I don't know if they would be willing to replace him or if they'd be willing to more or less bow down to him because I see Affleck more as WB's Robert Downey Jr. in yeah. that... Absolutely. For the first little bit, they're gonna have to. All right, let we let's just bow to him for right now. He's got us. He's got us by our balls. Let's just listen to him for a little bit. No, I mean he's, I, better, I, he's reaching into our ass wallets. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Just you know, hand over fist. But I uh, no, I completely agree with you in the fact that I think it makes more sense for them to play ball with Affleck because uh, if Affleck's not happy, there's I think they've got him on we. So what's funny is we have all these details about the MCU actors' contracts, and it's like, oh, they make a signed seven-film contract. We don't know anything about the DC actors' contracts, from what I know, or at least it hasn't been like the topic of conversation that the MCU from, actors' contracts have. I think, um, uh, I think they, I think uh, Ben Affleck's manager said something about his contract. I thought it was like he has like a three-movie thing. Like it's not really a long thing. It's like, well, if he's got a three-movie thing, they've kind of got him for uh, you know a little bit then. Um, you know, where where he couldn't just say, "All right, you're taking Batman away from me. Like I'm done after Justice League. I'm walking yeah. away." Like, <laughs> like he would have to, he would have to make a Batman movie if they replaced him and wanted to fast track it for like 2018 before a Justice League movie. Which is why yeah, I'm saying like, it's a little bit of a possibility, and I feel like maybe that's what Affleck was alluding to when he said, "We'll see if the script isn't coming along the way I like it. I won't do it." Maybe I mean I've that. Looking back, that clearly meant him like saying, okay, I won't direct it if it's not what I want it to be. I'll have somebody else direct it, and I'll be the star because I have to. Um, but I don't know. I, you know. I've seen a lot of different interesting things about people talking about why, you know, you know, why he's saying these things. And it's kind of hard to remember, you know, they're just words, and we basically just ascribe, you know, when you read something, like one passage, one quote can look one way to one person and a completely different way to another person. <clears throat> um, but Yeah, I also want to introduce the second part of this story because the, the whole reason we're even talking about that, or even he is addressing the rumors, is because uh, recently we reported on you know the whole Batman on film scoop that their sources were saying that the Batman film production, like just the actual you know start date, has been pushed back and... With that said, you know, it's not going to hit that July 2018 date, which kind of makes sense, I guess, when you factor that in. But also that supposedly there's issues with Justice League, which is why there's, like, hesitation or whatever. But like, that's kind of the the big thing that's been going around yeah. recently. And, I mean, it's it goes without saying, I think, you know, to some people that are like, you know, what? I don't know about Batman on film. They're not reputable. Batman, I mean, the dude's been doing this for a long time. I mean, he's got the respect of a lot of people in the industry, um, specifically in kind of the comic book like game. So if anybody's going to have sources, I trust this guy to have sources. And it's not entirely shocking that it's going to be delayed if it's going to be delayed, because he he says basically what he said specifically was it's not going to start in spring of 2017. It's not going to start filming in spring of 2017, which at this point, as Affleck has said, the script 
really are still working on it. At this point, you got to have the script done. Like if you're starting production in like within the next three months. Sorry, that's just kind of the way it's got to be. Unless you're going to like fly through casting and like figuring out where you're going to shoot everything and like all this set coordination that goes on. You know, it's just got to, there's going to be more time taken. Especially, I mean, considering the way Affleck was phrasing some of these things. So what Batman on film actually said was summer by the earliest is what he's hearing is is when it will film. And it's like, remember what I just said, DC movies average 16 months from (coughs) filming to releasing. So if they start filming in summer of 2017, that's 12 months to that July date, give or take like a month on either end. So it's clearly not, you know, maybe they'll hit that October date and they'll push Aquaman back because of it. Maybe they'll skip Aquaman and go to 2019. Who knows? Um, But it doesn't look like uh, that summer... 2018 date is is a possibility right now, according to what he said. And I, like like Luke was saying, I think that's for the best. Like give him the time that he needs to to make the film. But I think that comes down to Justice League, uh, in a big way. Yeah, I even I even said too in the original when I did the news flash about like the whole Batman being delayed. I even said in the video that it's in everyone's best interest to uh, make sure the movie is in the best. Uh, spot possible rather than just rush it out for next summer because that would just be a mess. But yeah, I mean, yeah. if see the thing is, and the thing because I've been alluding to this for a long time that it might be up to WB. It might not be up to Ben Affleck in the end. And yeah. then ultimately, they're the ones that call the shots. Ultimately, they're the ones that say, "No, we're going to do it this way. We're going to go in this direction." Or, "Okay, Ben, we'll play ball. This is your vision. This is where you're going." Um, you know. And if they feel like if, and I, I hope it doesn't, but if I'm really rooting for the movie, I want it to be good, I still have some hope. If Justice League bombs, if Justice League, because early, <laughs> like, there's some rumors right now, I know, there are some rumors right now that say that maybe they've combined what was originally supposed to be Justice League 1 and 2 into one movie because of the criticism. Um, they've said, uh, that's just a rumor I've hearing. Henry Cavill acknowledged to the cast that it was a really hard shoot. Um, he said really in all caps really hard yeah basically um, but I mean he acknowledged and he's been to chugging whiskey every day too I believe it but he's been acknowledging to the cast that it's been a hard shoot and you know it's one of those things where if Justice League does not do well I think that's when you see WB like turn the corner and say nope we need that Batman movie as soon as possible but even then it's like I feel like there it's a little too late because if they start filming in summer this year but if, if Affleck is still dragging his feet and they haven't started production by the time November rolls around, then that's when WB goes, all right, I'm sorry, fuck you, dude. Like, we're doing our own thing. Um, <laughs> Christian Bale's coming back, confirmed. Christian Bale's coming back. Um, <laughs> Affleck We're going to do this. Bale. We're going to introduce, like, multiplicity Brett here. Ratner directing. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But, uh... Oh, man. I don't know. Up, like... But... I don't know. <laughs> like, my question. whole thing is just because I... Like, because I think I found the uh, article. It was like Ben Affleck has two movie contracts outside of Batman v Superman, and I think they're both for Justice League. So Batman, he's apparently doing like I think the whole thing is that he's doing Batman of his own volition. Like he's not contractually obligated to do Batman. So again, if he really wanted to, if they were to push him so hard, he'd just be like, "No, I'm not doing it." And then I guess they'd be in a position where, well, shit, he doesn't have to do Batman. We can't make him do Batman. But That's an interesting take. I mean, <coughs> I think the I hadn't heard that before. Um, if it is something like where me, he's... Let me find the article real quick. Yeah, yeah. If, if, it is something where he's, if it is something where he's under contract for Justice League 1 and Justice League 2 specifically, right. then yeah, he's doing it of his own volition. There's really nothing they can do. But usually the way... Um, big production houses do these contracts it's like okay we've got you for two films we're not going to specify which films because of this situation exactly that we're talking about they're like we want you for just ambiguous film number one and ambiguous film number two Um, like Batman v Superman when he signed on it wasn't originally going to be Batman v Superman I remember when that story kind of developed that okay now it's going to be this Batman v Superman movie been in this YouTube game long enough uh, I'm you know I'll admit that that it's you know watching the projection like the trajectory of that movie was really interesting back in the day, um, but you know I don't know it'll be really interesting to see if if the contract is okay. like that. Um, wow! Yeah, all right. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty reputable huh. source. That's so maybe he is just only yeah. so maybe he's doing like Batman his, of his own uh, volition. 
yeah, it was like with Hollywood Reporter, and it was like his agent was like, yeah, he's only doing Justice League 1 and 2. Like, that's what he's only contractually obligated for. That's kind of crazy. So Batman would be like his own baby. And so, I mean, if he really, if he really felt pressured or anything, you know, Warner Brothers would either have to play ball or they just have to be, well, damn, we just can't. We, if we want to do Batman, it might not be having <laughs> anything to do with Ben Affleck. Damn. It's crazy. So, I, mean, I think, I I think we got to move on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so moving on to uh, another DCEU topic, actually. This, this came out of kind of nowhere uh, from a French magazine that actually had some scoops on BVS back in the day. I remember talking oh, about yeah. uh, some of their stories. Studio back. Cine Live. Yeah, that's pretty... I don't know how they're getting all these DC interviews, but What's basically uh, yeah. <laughs> they came out with some new images and stuff, and kind of dropped a lot of info and like came out of nowhere pretty much so they dropped a lot of plot details i mean they're they're <laughs> a big french movie magazine i mean i would i would i would say the biggest um french language magazine about about movies um and so that's why they, they actually in this article had uh quotes from chris pine they had behind the scenes photos so this is legit like this is undoubtable like, you know unless yeah. like wb decided to lie to people but um, so the scoops that they dropped, uh, and I'm sure Nick will tell you about that. The scoops that they dropped uh, were kind of huge because they upset the apple cart, as it were, uh, in regards to who <laughs> the villains were um, and some major plot details about uh, Wonder Woman and her mythos in the DCEU. Yeah, so basically they said that uh, – well, first I'll say what Chris Pine – so essentially Chris Pine is – um, undercover working for the Allies um, in a German base. I think you can actually see it in the trailer. He's kind of at one of their chemical plants or something. Um, and he's kind of trying to steal, I guess, what the blueprints are for this new chemical weapon they've come out with. Like, maybe they can like go through masks and everything, which we still also see in the trailer. He ends up stealing a plane. He gets shot down by Paradise Island, and then that's why all the Germans are on the beach trying to get him. But the interesting thing is about the villain thing. Um, so basically they said that Ares is the villain and that he's killed Zeus in this universe um, with the help of the Amazon, surprisingly. Which is, I'm, so. I'm hoping that's a mistranslation. I would love to be like, okay, the Amazon like, helped <laughs> bring him in. Because that to me like made sense. Like when I, was, when I was reading the paragraph, I was like, okay, that makes sense as to why they have the God Killer sword. Uh, because if they helped stop him, like maybe the, the rest of the gods would be like, all right, you guys keep this safe. Y'all clearly badasses. Uh, but like for them to take part in the rebellion, have the God Killer sword, which I think presumably in the movie, like my safe bet guess would be that that's what Ares used to kill Zeus. Um, you know, for them to have that would be like, you know, okay. Or maybe this is just some kind of like, okay, Zeus is gone, Ares won the rebellion. He's not really the king of the gods, but he's still out there running around type situation where he's like, all right, Amazonians, thanks. Here's this great sword. Take care of it for me. You know, I don't know. It's it's a really weird situation that this kind of puts it up. Like, when I say upsets the apple cart, this is crazy. Like, this could have huge ramifications for Shazam, even. Uh, you know, but... I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, Luke, what are your thoughts, though, on them revealing that uh, Ares is the villain? And I Big think Dr. fucking Poison surprise. Is the villain, so. say, yeah, what a surprise. Ares is the villain. Who would have guessed? But, uh... Damn. But, I mean, you know, it is pretty cool. I, I just for a long time was just assuming... Um, shit, what the hell is that dude's name? Hudson. What's his Charlie name? Hudson? Oh, Danny, uh, yes, Danny Char- Houston. Danny, Danny, whatever Danny Houston. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Hudson, how the hell did we get there? But <laughs> Danny Houston. I just assumed he was going to be Duke of Deception. But, um, I, I mean, if he is Ares, that's pretty cool. It just... Using the big guns pretty early, but, you know, whatever. But, um, I, I don't know. I got to tell you guys, there's not really a whole lot that I found out in this thing that really changes how I feel about Wonder Woman or really sticks out to me that much. Like, I get the whole Ares teams up with the Amazons to kill Zeus, but I mean... Okay. I don't I don't really know if that matters that much, considering Wonder Woman's stuff is just so weird and changes all the time, so I don't know, but... Yeah, yeah I... Personally, I would have honestly rather seen the Duke of Deception, because that lines up with... Um, 
they recently used him in the Legend of Wonder Woman. That was kind of like a retelling of her origin. Yeah. And usually he is like her first villain. Yeah. So I think that would have been cool, like having him and yeah. Doctor Poison in there. I mean, and Ares is her. like one of Wonder Woman's like main, like big bad level villains. It's like I think Ares and Cersei are like the the two. I would say yeah. like headliners. Like it makes sense to use someone like Duke of Deception in the Origin, where he could be like, it's like I'm just the minion. Like once she's been, I'm her, just the minion. Yeah, he it's like, oh, exactly fuck. like that. Yeah. I know. Like, I just I, mean, I I just went I through say... all this to kill you, and now you're just the minion. <laughs> Yeah, I would say, to be fair, it doesn't say Danny Houston is Ares. It just says Ares is involved in some capacity. So he could still be the Duke, and Ares is like, just at the end, I'll get her next time with a different sense henchman. I don't know. Dude, Ice Cube is Ares. That's true. There, yeah. There Please? could be some, uh, there, <laughs> Ice, you mean water tea? There could be some, uh, <laughs> there could be. <laughs> Great Rick and Morty reference. Uh, there could be some, you know, some lost in translation shit going on where it's like, okay, maybe Ares is there as the big bad. But even then, I don't think they would have revealed that. Like, if he's this Easter egg villain, uh, I don't think they would have yeah. revealed that to, to right. a magazine, even if it is a French magazine. Uh, well, but worst case scenario, he's uh, the final boss fight in the third act there you with go. bad CGI. Now, he's face your fight. rival. Optimus Primal. <laughs> <laughs> now he's the Beetleborg at the end. There yeah, you go. Exactly. <laughs> the big bad Beetleborg. <laughs> Rita Repulsa uses her magic to make uh, Ares really big. <laughs> make and my Ares grow. There you go. It gets yeah. a crossover that no one's expecting. I mean, we've the signs were there, guys. Justice League, Power Rangers comic book crossover. I mean, they're clearly, doing, yeah, they're doing in the comics. Clearly, there clearly. was a Wonder Woman. Power Rangers combo that was going to happen. Yeah, that that came out this week. Yeah, Justice League Power Rangers. Are we reviewing that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Comic reviews are killed. You don't review no comics. Yeah, nobody watches them. Nobody speak. Nobody get choked. Remember that. Yeah. So moving on, uh, TV time. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, yeah. DC TV. A lot of updates actually, because the TCAs were uh, this past weekend, and they talked a lot about you know their future slate, uh, what's coming out over the whole year, and kind of teasing some stuff about characters and. Um, relationships for further episodes and so they kind of specifically they said that the Black Flash character will return on multiple shows, not just the Flash Music Meister is confirmed to be the musical villain for the crossover and that Keith David is going to voice Solovar for a Gorilla Grodd two part episode, or I'm guessing where they go to Gorilla City, uh, wherever that earth is I think that's episode 13 and 14 of the Flash um, yeah, uh, CJ, what are your thoughts on all this this news? I love it, man. I mean, my, my favorite piece of the news is Keith David coming in as Solovar, who's going to yeah. be a really, really interesting character to see on The Flash. When I originally heard the news, like, I thought that he was going to be voicing Gorilla Grodd, and I was like, we've already had Grodd. Like, how are they doing this? This is going to be weird. <laughs> um, but I love Vice President Keith David. Um, and I really, really am looking forward to that particular episode, mainly because, you know, one, Keith David's amazing, but also because I've wanted more Grodd for a long time on The Flash. I really just want them to stop doing, like, speedster of the season type bullshit. Like, Barry can't keep saying he's the fastest man alive if he's constantly not the fastest man alive, all right? Um, yeah. But that is the most annoying <clears throat> thing about that show. It's like, I'm Barry Allen. I'm the fastest man alive, except for... Uh, you know the 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 brother of this chick that I'm trying to get with. Also, um, every villain that I've ever faced. Um, but I feel like they just should be honest in the intro. That's that's my thought. Black Flash is also great. Music Meister makes sense. There you go. Bam, <laughs> bam. Yeah. Lurk. Black Flash is pretty cool. I do kind of like that. And the fact that it's in multiple shows is also really cool. It's nice that he's Flash gonna show villain... up and kill Arrow. <laughs> He's gonna show up and kill Felicity. We can only hope. But, Start um, playing the Smiths, please, please, please. Let me, let me, let me, let me get what I want this time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I really, but I really do like that. That Flash villains are like going into other shows and stuff, especially Black Flash because that's a cool well, like character. Fawn? Uh, was he in anything else? He's on he's on uh, Legends right now because he's the Legion of Doom. Oh, that's right, that's right. I I still probably need to watch Legends, but um, that's pretty cool. And uh, Keith David Solovar, man, I might just I might just try and catch up with Flash 
just so I can see that episode because I love me some Keith David and I love me some gorillas. So, <laughs> monkey. Monkey. That. a monkey. Harambe. Monkey. R.I.P. Harambe. <laughs> they have to have an ape named Harambe in there as a cameo. No, they don't. Don't say that. So, Or no, you know what? They should have like a statue. Like, just there of, like, a monkey, like, a monkey statue in Gorilla City, and it says Harambe, like, 2006, 2016. We lost all faith in humanity when they shot one of our brothers. This Harambe monument that's unexplained, but an Easter egg, is what I want. (laughs) It's everything I want, and I don't care if it cost me everything I ever had. No Harambe, it's cancer. It needs to end. He's the end times. But Nick, Nick, how do you feel about this news? Um, I'm really excited by this. I they had been talking a lot about the whole Black Flash thing. I didn't I didn't honestly think he would be back this season at all or this year. I thought he would probably uh be safe for like season four of Flash, but the fact that he's gonna be on multiple shows and they said they have multiple stories planned for him, that's pretty awesome. And obviously like you guys said, Keith David, amazing. I love all of his voice work, so can't wait for that. And the music meister makes sense. A lot of people want Neil Patrick Harris. I don't know if that's possible at this point, but who knows? So, <laughs> I hope so. That, that's yeah. That's my thoughts. I don't know who else could play Music Meister. I mean, there. I think who was the other dude from Book of Mormon? Um, not Josh Gad. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Hold on. Oh, Brian Cranston. He could no, do not it. him. But he could do it too. Um, <laughs> uh. Who is Andrew Scott uh, Reynolds? Andrew uh, Reynolds. This guy. Uh, I'm going to post his picture, and you were going to see who he is. Uh, I was going to say, uh, when all else fails, you turn to the uh, the one boy that can play anything, Jaleel White. That's true. Jaleel White is the best. Wait, what about Sylvester Stallone? He could. Do I think it. he could do it. Like, but tone deaf. That would be funny. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Damn. But I know, I think, um, but that was pretty dumb. I really don't know how to pronounce his last name. Rannells is the best, like, I'm just going to go with Rannells. that. Um, Andrew Rannells. Um, Rannells. Rannells. I don't know if that's how he says, but no, he could definitely be, <laughs> I mean, he's been, he's been on Broadway, uh, he could definitely do it, and I think he'd be up for it. Um, and he kind of yeah. has a look, if you're looking at that picture. Yeah, um, definitely. Give him a funny a hat. Little give him a funny hat. Thing. Give him, him his, fancy give him hat. his fancy hat, damn it. Keep the fancy hat dream alive. Hashtag fancy hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think that wraps up our TV talk. I'm really excited, though, too, because uh, I know that later this month the show's finally come back, so hopefully they all they all come back strong and you know keep, yeah. it, keep that momentum going. Um, I'll, uh, I'll definitely try out the shows for this mid-season thing, and if I like what I see, I'll go back and watch the earlier episodes. Damn. Yep. <laughs> So, I think it's that time for viewer questions. Yeah, this is the time that everyone everyone waits for. Most importantly, uh, Waru, Waru boy. <laughs> so, Waru. First question is from Waru. Actually, he says, "What if Justice League gets mixed reception from critics and viewers, just like BVS? So, if it gets mixed from both parties, then like we said earlier, I think that's just like a that's a really big like you got to rethink everything at that point, right? Because I, mean, I think you know that's the third thing you've already done some course correcting. Um, this is supposedly going to be a lot funner. I think that's when you start to look at okay, maybe let's look at both who constructed this thing and how we constructed it as the issue, not necessarily the tone we're going for. Like maybe the people we have in place are not the people we need to have in <coughs> place, you know. Um, what happens to the future of stuff, though, if that happens? Because, I mean, like... Oh, I think everything. Everything that's not filming is probably immediately canned. Um, <laughs> immediately? Yeah. You think so? I mean, so here's the thing. So by, so Aquaman will be filming by then. Batman will be filming by then. I think those will be out. Those will be... Oh, Sirens, maybe? Sirens might be filming by then. Those will definitely be, probably, they will come out, potentially. Um, they might undergo some changes, but they will definitely come out. Um, I think everything in the future that's not filming yet is on hold. Absolutely. Because um, you can't really stop the ball once it's rolling, but you can stop it before it gets going, you know? Um, mm, right. So I feel like that's the, you know, once it's filming, it's kind of like, all right, we've already devoted this much budget, this much money into, you know, 
this this thing. We're not just going to stop it. Although, who knows? If it's really bad, they might stop <clears throat> Aquaman if it's in the middle of filming. Um, but, I mean, th- <laughs> the biggest like part of this question to me is mixed reception from viewers. Like, I know a lot of the general audience didn't love it, but I feel like the audience reaction was generally more positive than the critics' reaction. So I think if the, if the audience reception is as bad as the critics' reaction, that's where you have to be worried. But... Um, if they're both yeah. more middling, like if the Rotten Tomatoes score is like maybe let's say like fifty to sixty, um, that's better. I think they would still continue moving in that direction as long as they have the diehards. Like not all the critics hated it; it was just some of the critics. Uh, eh, they'll be fine. It was made for the fans, after was. all. It was just they'll a be fun fine. afternoon at the movies, after all. Jesus Christ! Who the hell pours four hundred and ten million into a movie <laughs> for fans? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Luke, wait, is that your answer? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I kind of agree with CJ, but I mean, just, I don't know, like, if that is not as well received, that's like four movies that just have really just not, like, it's either 50-50 or just, like, really uneven reception, so I mean, mm. I don't know what they would do at that point. I don't think they would reboot, definitely not, like too much has gone into this but i mean definitely i guess i kind of agree with cj they would just anything that's not too far in development they would just be like stop burn it down and we gotta rethink this exactly Uh well i mean yeah i'm just imagining them lighting lighting (laughs) matches on the aquaman set like when james wan comes in i just think they would say like hey we we tried like the subtle course correction thing. We tried to work within the existing framework we had set up. It clearly did not change. This was supposed to be our Avengers. This was supposed to be what basically pole vaulted us into stratospheric success, um, and it's not. So I think at that point, that's when you start looking at like, okay, what can we change? Like, what can we feasibly still change? Um, so and, I don't know. Just... Yeah, exactly. And that's I feel like that's like okay, well what can we the question is going to be what can we change without restarting all over? And really there's not much. Like you know, you can change the creative team and maybe they'll do that. Um they can change the, you know, they can maybe they'll get if it doesn't work, maybe they'll get rid of the Snyders completely, maybe they'll bring some fl- uh, fresh blood in uh different directors for future product uh projects. Um but even then it's like I think a lot of people would just, there there would at least there would be a strong contingent within WB pushing for a full burn it down scorched earth will start over <laughs> reboot. Yeah. Uh, but I mean that's a nightmare scenario cuz that sets you back a couple of years. <laughs> right. All right. Uh next question, Jalen, he says uh who are your top 3 writers? Um so for me I'll say well, obviously Frank Miller, uh, probably Grant Morrison is one of my top three, and um, honestly, this is gonna. These are like so memey and cliche, but I'm probably Jeff Johns. Honestly, I mean, I don't. Hey, his recent work is like the stuff that he did on Justice League in the New Fifty Two is like just mediocre in my opinion. But before that, like all of his classic Teen Titans runs, Green Lantern, obviously, like eight years on that. Green Lantern, oh god. So good. Uh, even even his no, Batman, yeah. I love his Batman Earth One stuff. So it I mean, is good. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, Luke, what are your what are your, oh, yeah, Luke? Go ahead. Luke, go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, I mean, I'll agree with uh, Nick Morrison is like one of my favorites. I love almost everything he does. Um, Neil Gaiman. That's so that's probably good. another yeah. cliche one too. But I mean, like these guys are cliches for a reason, just because they're they're legendary. Because just the stuff they've done is just amazing. Yeah, they're transcended into wizardry. Yeah, yeah know, like exactly. Alan Moore. Exactly. And uh, you know, I would say either Alan Moore or Jamie Delano between them. Um, oh, as my top. <laughs> I don't know how to choose okay. between the two of them. They're both um, really good. I would say honestly, my my number one favorite overall is Jonathan Hickman just because I think a lot of the stuff that he's done like the just the world build he, that's his best thing is world building and that is also my favorite thing like I'm a huge shill like if you give me this big world you built to basically like in, creatively like play around in I love that um, my number two is Tom King uh, just because I love just about everything he's ever written uh, a lot of people will be like even Batman and I'll be like even Batman um, but Mostly, of course, Grayson, although The Vision, if you haven't read Vision, 
it is transcendent. It is without a doubt the best comic book that I've read in years. Um, that's how good it is. Read it. It's great. Um, and number three, it's kind of tough because I would say like Jeff Johns or Graham Morrison, but for the sake of being different, I'll say Tim Seeley because I think if you're reading Nightman, uh, Night, Nightman, oh, I Challenger love that of the Day Nightman. Man, uh, you know, if you Nightwing, if you read Nightwing, it was so clearly not just all Tom King being great that made the book good. I think Tim Seeley was really the heart of that, um, and he's really just he's nailed my favorite character. So, um, yeah, Tim Seeley. Um, you got to meet them at New York too, right? I saw them when they were there. No, I didn't get to meet them unfortunately, but you did see them. <laughs> yeah, I got to. I, uh, I saw them like almost every day. I went to Artist Alley. What sucks is Tom King was at Wizard World of Comic Con, and I was working all of the days that Wizard World of Comic Con was going on, so I didn't get to see him. But my friend got to interview him, and my friend is very good at interviews, and it was incredible to read. Um, so hopefully, I'll just be able to interview him someday. I, uh, I have to replace my Alan Moore, Jamie Delano thing real quick because I just realized I fucked up. I mean, Garth Ennis is hey. one of my favorites. Oh, Garth, Garth Ennis. Ennis. I thought it was Garth Ennis for a while. That was my bad. Garth, yeah, my I, I get to see him at New York Comic Con. He looked like a hobo. <laughs> That's, that sounds about right. This is how we never get. Uh, but yeah, interviews. Love Garth Ennis. Damn. Garth, Garth, my Eens. Me Eens. <laughs> me Eens. Garth, me Eens. <laughs> what's the so, next question? What's the What's the final? Qu- All right, final question we have is from Classy Ulysses Five. He says. Which top three DC superheroes or supervillains would movie would you like to direct? Thanks, and have a great time. Well, thank you for that question. Um, is it three characters in one movie or three different movies? I'm confused. Is that? Uh, um, I think it's three different movies. Three different movies. Okay, it could well, be a superhero or a wow. superhero or a villain, but it would be three different. DC movies. Take a, take DC comics. I think um, I've got mine. I um, I would do. A Dick Grayson Nightwing movie or a Titans movie, I would I'll say like I'll do Titans. Um, this is tough. I do Green Lantern, uh, Hal Jordan oh, Green yeah. Lantern, and I know Nick Nick has got a great Green Lantern script already in his back pocket. Um, and I'll, I'll do Plastic Man because I really love the, God the damn it. I really love the pitch <laughs> that we came up with last night on the awards. So I'm gonna stick with that, dude. Yeah, fuck. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say see I was gonna say Sinestro, but I figure that was something that, uh, or I would just I would just adapt Jeff Johns' Green Lantern run and print money. But well, they tried I guess I'll once, go. Yes. Um, I don't know because I'm thinking about this at uh, characters I think I would do good at, not necessarily ones that I would want to do. I mean, if I actually had directing talents, which I don't, but oh. Um, I would say Swamp Thing, um, Reverse Flash, and oh, wow. Hellblazer. I think you could actually make a really cool uh, Reverse Flash movie. Okay. All right. Um, so for me, I would say, um, this is kind of a like cheat, but I would say hey, the Justice League Dark team. Does that count, maybe? No? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. Justice League Dark movie, um, Green Lantern, obviously, like I said. Uh, have a really interesting take on it and uh, da, 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 DC Comics character <sighs> I don't think I would want to do a Batman movie just because I'm too that's too close to the, the reach I don't know I honestly what about the question no no um, it needs an HBO think. series yeah that that would be much I would actually turn it down just to say no it deserves to be on TV but um mm. I'm trying to think of a DC Comics hero. Hmm. I guess, you know, I guess maybe Superman, actually. Or, or Shazam, great. actually. Superman or Shazam could be cool. I was going to say Shazam. Both need movies. Both yeah. need movies. But, uh, yeah, those are, that's my, uh, that's my choices. But I think that brings us to the end of the episode. Um, the end of another illustrious podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a great evening. Uh, you know, Wonderful. It's out. been a, it's been great chatting with y'all, fellas. Gentle, mental gen. Yeah. Uh, I I very much enjoyed this. This was a nice evening. Indubitably. <laughs> yes. You don't yes, have any yes. strongbow. Yes, indeed. Yeah. It's this. Yeah. They can't get Fuck. mad. <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> it's 
Someone totally did not just CJ. try to shake my, my beer and knock another beer <laughs> off of <laughs> So this has been Super Friends 64, guys. Thank you all again for supporting the show every week, coming back, Somehow. listening to it. Um, Somehow. <laughs> Even if it's um, out of hate, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, all the thank you for leaving comments, uh, liking the videos, sharing the podcast, and just being generally interested in you know when the podcasts are going up. And also, be sure to leave questions, of course, for next week's episode using the hashtag AskSuperFriends. And you know what we forgot to do? Um, this podcast was sponsored by Loot Crate, our friends over at LootCrate.com. Oh, you could save 10% so on any new subscription using that Bridge 10 promo code at that exclusive oh. link down in the description box. www.trylootcrate.com slash hybrid network. Yes, once again, that's www.trylootcrate.com slash hybrid network. <laughs> really, it's an incredible deal. I know uh, this month's was, and you've still got eight days to order it, or by the time this is being released you've got i think six days to order it uh this month's theme was origins uh, it's really cool it's got stuff from marvel dc uh it's gonna have some teenage mutant ninja turtle stuff in there and even some nintendo stuff which they teased might be donkey kong get your mints no, on king it. kong <laughs> king kong donkey kong <laughs> my favorite nintendo property king kong there you go <laughs> i'm glad nick remembers that yeah so um yeah, definitely check out that loot crate because you, do, you like we said you you still have time to get that origins box. Um, if you don't want to get the origins box, just wait another week or so and check out the next one. Oh yeah, and we'll we'll update you next week on what that next box next box that next box is uh, to make sure you got plenty of time to get it. Yeah, just but, in time uh, for Valentine's Day. It, I think it will be. Yeah. So, with all that being said, thank you guys again for listening and. Have a nice day, evening, or morning. See you next week. Adios. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys later.